Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a chit chat get ready with me where I show you guys my everyday makeup routine. It is the makeup look that I currently have on. But before I show you guys this makeup look, I want to tell you guys about Dossier Perfume. I absolutely love this brand so much. Dossier is the fair alternative to luxury perfumes. Their motto is that they believe that everyone deserves to smell like luxury. And remember, it's pronounced Dossier. But on their site, they have so many different perfumes inspired by some of your favorites, I'm sure. Like for example, they have Victor and Rolf Flower. Bomb, Gucci's Bloom, YSL Black Opium at such amazing prices. The two that I have to show you today, I am literally obsessed with. I have been wearing them and I've been getting so many compliments. The first one is called Woody Sandalwood. Its top notes are Violet Leaves and Cardamom. I don't know if I'm saying that correct. Middle notes are Orisis, Amberox, Cedarwood, and Cyprol. And then the base notes are Musk, Sandalwood, and Amber. And this scent is based off Le Labo Centaur 33. And I have been wanting that perfume for so long but it's honestly so expensive and this is the perfect alternative because I get to try the scent without having to pay that insane price. They're super long lasting and they smell so amazing. I'm absolutely obsessed with that scent and then this one is Ambery Saffron and if you know me my favorite perfume is Baccarat Rouge 540. I wear it literally all the time and this is an amazing alternative for it. You can literally get it for $19. The top notes are Saffron, Orange Blossom, the middle notes are Jasmine, Plum, and Cedar wood and then the base notes are oak moss fir balsam and amber guys this literally smells so good and it really just proves dossier saying that anyone can smell like a luxury perfume at an affordable price dossier got rid of two milliliter samples in order to reduce the plastic waste and if you don't want to keep your scents all you have to do is return them within 30 days of receiving and you will be charged absolutely nothing i seriously love them so much so if you guys want to check out dossier i'll have my code here on the screen as well as a link in the description box of this video so make sure to go check them out thank you so much for dossier with working with me on this video i love you guys and with that being said, I'm going to show you guys my updated everyday makeup routine and the products that I've been loving right now and show you guys how I get this look. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started with the makeup, I'm just going to clip my bangs back just so I don't get any makeup in my hair. You can literally get these anywhere at Ulta, Target, whatever. And then I'm going to go in with my primer. This one is from Glow Recipe. It's the Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. I absolutely love this product for skin prep. It makes your skin so dewy and it gives you your face a nice grip for your foundation. And I I feel like my makeup just sticks better once I use this product. And then before we get into the rest of the makeup, I'm gonna look at my phone because I asked you guys to ask me questions on Twitter and on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on my other socials, make sure you do so you can be included in videos like this. So I'm just gonna read some of these and answer them while I do my makeup. Next, I'm gonna go in with Charlotte Tilbury's Flawless Filter. And the first question is, do you still wanna go to fashion school? So as you guys know, I'm currently getting my associates at Pierce College here in California. And a dream that I've had for a really long time now is to go to FIT in New York after I'm done studying here to get my bachelor's there. Would I still like to do this? Yes, I should be graduating from Pierce within the next year, so it would be happening kind of soon. It's just kind of scary because I still live with my parents right now, in case you don't know, and that would be my first time moving out, which is just kind of scary because A, I've never moved out, and B, I would be moving across the country. So although I would love to do that, and I'm gonna try to do that, it's not a for sure plan. Just because there's a lot of things that go into moving especially across the country and like New York's expensive I'm not one to talk because living in LA is so expensive as well next I'm gonna go in with my Kosas foundation love this foundation so much my favorite foundation but as I was saying it's just like a lot because then I have to find an apartment close to FIT and that area is really expensive and you can't really get the same type of apartments you can here for the same price over there and there's just like a lot that goes into it so to answer your question I know that was kind of a lot. Yes, I definitely still want to go to FIT. There is FITM here in LA, but I would like to go to New York if possible. It's just, it's going to take a lot of planning and preparation, and I don't know how realistic that is for me within the next year. Maybe I take a gap year in between getting my associates and my bachelor's. I'm not exactly sure, but I guess I'm just going to figure it out as time passes, and then once I have a for sure plan, I will definitely make sure to update you guys. I think going to New York and going to fashion school would 
literally make me thrive. Just like imagining all the content I can make and the moving vlogs and the school vlogs over there. And I've just noticed I'm such a happier person when I'm in New York. So if I can make my dream a reality, I definitely will. Next, I'm gonna go in with the Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer from Charlotte Tilbury. And this question is, what's your top Taylor Swift songs and what's your favorite album of hers? In case you guys don't know, I have been really getting into Taylor Swift recently. I'm so excited for Midnight's to come out next month. And it's not that I've not always been a Swifty. Like, I've always liked Taylor Swift. But ever since Folklore came out, like, I really have loved her. And I just think she's, like, the epitome of a girl boss. And honestly, she's just, like, been my obsession recently. And I just feel like the whole Swifty fandom is so nice and so fun. And, like, everyone's just so sweet. But to answer your question, my favorite album is definitely Folklore. I just feel like there's so many songs on that album that perfectly describe how I feel on a daily basis. I would have to say my favorite song of hers is definitely Cardigan. I also love Back to December. I love Champagne Problems. Sad, Beautiful, Tragic is probably my most played Taylor Swift song right now. I also love Mirrorball and My Tears Ricochet. I love Exile. As you can see, I am a big folklore girly. And yeah, I just love her so much. I'm curious to see if I'm gonna love Midnight's as much as Folklore because the way she described that album, I feel like it's really up my alley. But I don't know, Folklore just has a special place in my heart. I just feel like it's honestly perfection. There's no skips. Now I'm gonna go in with some more cream products. First, going in with my Contour One from Charlotte Tilbury. So far, I've only used Charlotte Tilbury in this video, but I love her makeup products. And this next question, we're getting a little bit more deep. It says, how do you know if someone is done with you or doesn't want you anymore? Okay, for me personally, I can tell with an attitude change. You know, sometimes people are just going through it and they need some space and that's totally okay. And for me personally, if someone just starts treating me poorly, that will make me want to be done with them. Like for example, if you have a boyfriend who treats you amazing for like two years, absolute perfection, everything you can want in a boyfriend is literally your dream guy and then one day just stops treating you that way, I would say that's a big indicator that either he's done or just your relationship isn't working anymore. And honestly, that's completely okay. I feel like something that I've been trying to learn recently, and maybe this advice will help you as well, going in with the Charlotte Tilbury blush, is that not everyone in your life is meant to be there forever. You know, some people are meant to come into your life to help heal problems that you wouldn't be able to heal on your own. And you know, in relationships or friendships or whatever aspect it is in your life, no one is going to grow like this constantly forever. I think I've talked about it on my channel before, but like I've had a falling out with a best friend and like we didn't talk for like a year or two and then we came back together and now we're stronger than ever. So it's like, so in my opinion, I would say if they're treating you poorly and you're just constantly feeling bad about yourself and about the relationship, it's probably time to end it. And you don't have to wait for them to end it. Like if they aren't meeting your standards, it's okay for you to end it too. I know it can be hard, but you honestly just have to do what's gonna make you feel the best every single day. This next question is, do you plan to visit the Philippines? And this is something that I feel like I talk about, but maybe I don't talk about it enough because someone commented on a recent video that they didn't know this about me, but I am half Filipino. I feel like I talk about it a lot, but maybe you don't know. I'm half Filipino. My dad is from the Philippines and all of my family is from there on my dad's side. My Lala, who is my great grandmother, is actually 109, which is honestly so crazy. She is like the light of our family. She is just like literally the most amazing person in the entire world. She is like the diamond of our family. She is so amazing. She might be one of the most amazing people I will ever meet in my lifetime. Just all the incredible stories she's had. She was literally born in 1913 for context and she's just been through so much. I just love her to pieces. I could talk about her forever. Next, I'm going in with my Givenchy pink powder. But with that being said, I have been to the Philippines. I think I was eight or seven. I was in like the second grade. From what I remember, it was absolutely beautiful and it was so amazing to meet so many people of my family, like my cousins, aunts, uncles, whatever. And I would definitely love to go back. I don't have like for sure plans like in the future, like there's nothing set in stone, but I would absolutely love to go again because it was definitely one of my favorite trips that I've been on. It's honestly just really cool to go to wherever your family is from. Like my dad was literally born in the Philippines, so it was just a really cool experience. And I would love to travel there again now that I'm older and I feel like I can appreciate it a little bit more because I feel like personally for me, I appreciate traveling more now that I'm older. Next, we're gonna go in with eyebrows. This is their Gimme Brow and Volumizing Brow Pencil. I believe this came out not too long ago and it's absolutely amazing. I love that you can just sharpen it. But honestly, it's so sweet how so many of you guys have been asking about my mental health. This question
question says how's it going with your emotional and mental health hope you're doing well and there were so many comments like this and it's funny because i don't really talk about my mental health on any other platforms so it's sweet to see comments like this because i know you guys are actually watching my videos a little bit of an update i know i talk about it in like every video i have been doing well recently i've picked up a new hobby of reading as you guys know and it's really just been very therapeutic for me honestly i feel like when i'm reading i can do nothing else but focus on the book it's honestly just been really good for me to have that new hobby i'm also gonna start going to therapy which is very new for me i've never been to therapy before and it's honestly a little bit intimidating but i know people who have literally had the best experiences with therapy so it gives me hope i just have a really hard time talking about my feelings like yeah here on youtube i can talk about how i'm feeling but not necessarily what's the problem a because i think it's weird to bring like real problems to the internet like i can tell you guys how i'm feeling without giving specific details but when it comes to talking about those actual specific details with like people close in my life i am so bad at it going in with gimme brow from benefit i feel like that stems from the fact that i really hate confrontation if someone's hurting my feelings i will literally keep it to myself until one day i literally explode because i can't take it anymore which is not a healthy way to cope so hopefully my therapist can help me with that i'm gonna carve out my brows now with the same concealer i'm doing better and hopefully with therapy i'll be doing even better than i'm doing right now if you guys have me on spotify i feel like it's almost embarrassing because you can see like what i'm feeling based on the music i'm listening to next i'm gonna go in with my tartlet palette from tarte i have been using this thing for years i absolutely love it i feel like it just has all of the basic colors that you need and then i'm just gonna go in with this light brown shade and put it in my crease the next question is what is your favorite and least favorite thing about being an influencer so my favorite thing definitely has to be connecting with people and talking with you guys i feel like i have made so many amazing friends that are like a part of my fandom like you guys are so sweet and whenever i'm bored and i need a friend to talk to i genuinely go to twitter or to instagram or whatever mostly twitter because i love talking with you guys on there i feel like you guys honestly know a lot about me and i try to know a lot about you guys as well and like keep up to date with what's happening in your life so that definitely has to be my favorite thing and then my least favorite thing about being an influencer is probably not knowing when to take breaks and let me explain this so with being an influencer obviously I post everything about my life I feel like I'm pretty much an open book and I tell you guys literally everything like every thought that's going through my brain so whenever I'm going through something that's a little bit more personal or obviously I'm going through something and I'm crying and I don't want to be on camera I'm just gonna go in with a light shade and put it all over my lid but I feel like my least favorite part about being an influencer is the fine line between posting your everyday life and then keeping something's personal right now there is this high demand of posting a lot of content it's more like quantity over quality and people just want you to post every single day and you have to post on so many different platforms whereas i feel like back in the day it used to just be like one musically a youtube video maybe every two weeks i feel like especially when i was a fan of youtubers they weren't uploading that frequently because they wanted their videos to be high quality but now i feel like people are almost lowering their standards and they just want constant content and don't don't get me wrong i want my favorite youtubers to post every single day but on the other side when you're an influencer it's almost hard because say for example you're going through a hard time mentally for a couple months and you don't want to be on camera every single day i'm taking this black shade and using it for a wing liner just to kind of map out where i'm going to place the actual liquid liner and so it's like am i being unproductive by not posting or am i taking care of my mental health because i'm being off camera and i'm dealing with what i need to deal with obviously when you're an influencer it's your job to show your everyday life and when your everyday life is currently something that you don't want to have on camera you can lose engagement and people become less interested in you which can really mess with your emotions because like if you stop posting and your engagement rates go lower just because of the algorithm you can think oh my god like am i just not interesting anymore like does no one care what i'm posting which can make you want to post less even more honestly just being an influencer plays mind games with you a lot because you constantly almost have to be obsessed with yourself because you're constantly looking at yourself 24 7 you're making content so you're looking at yourself in the camera you're editing videos when i edit a youtube video it takes me at least 13 hours to edit one so i'm constantly looking at myself and hearing my voice and like it can be honestly annoying like i i don't know i feel like i just went on a whole tangent i hope i answered that question well i tried my best this next question is any examples of times manifesting has worked for you next i'm gonna go in with this eyeliner from benefit it's the extreme precision liner and i would honestly say the biggest time that i've manifested was my dog and granted, 
I know Lauren did get me rosé. But for the longest time, I have been saying that I want a white Pomeranian. It was almost to a point where I was like, I don't want a white Pomeranian. I'm going to have a white Pomeranian. Like, I just truly believed it. And then one day, Lauren happened to surprise me with rosé, a white Pomeranian. Which obviously, that's her just being a great friend. But I feel like I truly manifested rosé into my life. Because, you know, you can get a dog and you can just not really vibe. But she's honestly everything that I could ever want in a dog. She's just like the perfect dog for me and my family. So I would say that's the biggest time I've ever manifested. Which movie changed you? And honestly, this is a funny story. I don't think I've ever shared it on my channel or on social media in general. I'm going in with the Lash Paradise Mascara from L'Oreal. This mascara is the bomb. But the movie that has changed me is La La Land. And if you know me, I've talked about it literally everywhere. My favorite movie is La La Land. A, I love musicals. I'm a sucker for a good musical. And B, I liked that it didn't have a typical ending. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend it. I'm gonna spoil it right now, so if you don't want to hear the spoiler, sorry. I'm gonna put on some Amazon eyelashes, but in case you don't know, Gianni and I dated for nine months before we officially started dating. Like, our anniversary is May 12th of 2017, but we started talking to each other in August of 2016. We didn't start dating right away because we both had some maturing that needed to happen before we actually got together, and I genuinely believe if we started dating in August of 2016, we wouldn't be dating still today. Just because I feel like in those nine months, we really matured and it made us the people that we are today. That way we could be together for so long. But with that being said, in those nine months, we did take a break of talking for maybe about two of those months. And in that time period, I was dating this other guy, which there was a lot of drama there. We're not going to bring that onto the internet. But the whole time I was dating this guy, I was like, I don't know if he's the one I actually want to be with. And keep in mind at this point, this other guy, we'll call him David, okay? And keep in mind, while I'm telling the story, David and I were not officially dating. But I go to see this movie, La La Land, with my best friend, her boyfriend, and then David. And if you guys don't know the ending of La La Land, Mia and Sebastian see what their future could have been like if they were together, but then it pans to Mia with this new guy that she's not really happy with, and she's like, you know, I could have this epic love with Sebastian, but I have this security right now with this new guy that I'm married to and have a child with, but there's a part in my heart that's always gonna love Sebastian. By the way, I'm using the Hula Bronzer from Benefit. And while I'm watching this movie, keep in mind, I'm an actress, Gianni's a singer. The storyline of Sebastian and Mia was very similar to Gianni and I at the time. And I'm sitting here watching them and I look to my left and there's this new guy, David, and I'm like, oh my God, this movie is my life right now. I was like, what is happening? And I literally had to go to the bathroom at the movie theater with my best friend and I was crying my eyes out and I was like, you don't understand, like that movie is my life right now. Like this is hitting so close to home and I'll just never forget that feeling that I had while watching La La Land, which is why it's my favorite movie of all time. And I don't think any movie could ever top it. But obviously I didn't have the outcome of La La Land. Gianni and I ended up being together and it didn't end up working out with Dave or David. What do we end up calling him? I don't remember. Going in with the Benefit Blush in Sunny, which also just proves if you love someone, set them free. And if it's meant to be, they'll come back to you. Because Gianni and I had a lot of trial and tribulation in the beginning. And ever since we started officially dating, it's been like the most blissful, peaceful thing in my life. I honestly couldn't ask for a better boyfriend and I don't think I would be me without Gianni. Next, I'm gonna go in with the Mary Luminizer highlighter from The Bomb. This next question is, have you ever thought of moving out of LA? I mean, as you guys know, is the first question I answered. I have for college, but I have in general besides that as well. Like, honestly, I love LA. My family's here. I have a lot of great memories here. All my friends are out here, but there's a lot of things that I don't like about it. Like, I don't like how there's so much traffic all the time. I don't really like like the culture out here necessarily. And then the biggest thing that I don't like about LA is that we don't have seasons. I've talked about this a few times, but it really irks me that it's always like 75 degrees here, which I know some people would literally thrive for. So I try to be grateful, but I would love to, you know, have like a white Christmas where it actually snows on Christmas or live somewhere where the leaves change during the fall. I feel like living here sometimes can almost feel like a simulation just because it feels like the weather is the same every Every single day and honestly that can be kind of depressing so when I'm older I would definitely love to live somewhere on the East Coast where I don't know I don't think I would want to raise a family in New York but to live there for a short period of time and then maybe live in like Massachusetts or somewhere on the East Coast when I actually want
want to have a family going in with some lip liner this one is from laura mercier and it's in the shade naked just go along my lips and then going in with the rem lipstick in the shade bubbly i absolutely love this lipstick and then to set the face i'm gonna use the morphe setting spray and to finish off this getting ready process, I'm going to take the Dossier Perfume in Woody Sandalwood so that I can feel nice and fresh for the day. So yeah, this is the finished makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed and found some new products that you want to try. This is like the makeup that I've been wearing every single day. And it was nice chatting with you guys and catching up. You guys know I love talking with you guys while I do my makeup. If you guys did like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Join the Bee Family. I would absolutely love to have you a part of it. And comment down below any other YouTube video ideas that you want to see from me. Again, huge shout out to Dossier for working with me on this video. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next YouTube video. Bye!